since you brought that up here at the outset, 800 games? You played 827 games. games. That's the first question for you. I was How two when possible? he started. First off, I was two when he started. You know what? Stay and I was out 35 of it. when he stopped. 827 games, Daryl Durant. How is that possible? I, I think people forget I started when I was 18, so I had a couple of years ahead of everybody else. Most guys didn't start until they were 20, 21. Uh, right out of college. I it's Mike's not working. Get, get, that little closer. get him a better mic. Uh, so I think I had a three-year jump on everybody, but uh, I was fortunate enough. I mean, I had my fair share of injuries, but uh, rehabbed well and uh, got back out there as much as I could. Taylor Tolman, uh, as Ron detailed and the video clearly showed, uh, was the best goal scorer to score 100 goals the quickest at age 29 in Major League Soccer. Uh, but the thing I want to bring up to you at the outset, Taylor, August 30th, 2008, Revolution, New England Revolution is playing the Los Angeles Galaxy. Uh, your first concussion. Did you at that time realize the severity of the injury? Um, no. That was not my first concussion. That was the only one I remember. Mm -hmm. Wait, where are we right now? Uh, <laughs> no, it was, um, I was saying this to Daryl during dinner. It's an honor to be in St. Louis and to be honored for my play on the field, but uh, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, and when I leave this earth, I'll be remembered for what I'll do off the field with concussions. And what we didn't know on August 30th, 2008, we do know more now on September 17th, 2015. We'll know plenty of more in the next three, four years, and our youth will be, and our parents more in particular, would be better educated. But I didn't know, Bill, if I did know, I would have walked right off that field, mm -hmm. and I'd still be blind. With the Think Taylor Foundation, which is a very prevalent with sports-related injuries, obviously due to concussion, are people getting a feel now, not just for the concussion itself, but for the lingering aftermath? Yeah, I mean, it's grown. I mean, I was just telling Daryl as well, September 21st through the 25th, we have the first concussion awareness week ever in this country in the state of Massachusetts. Every boy and girl that plays high school soccer will wear an orange wristband. Uh, they will participate in concussion education classes. And that's due to just uh, this foundation and, and hard work. My money is on all of us making better decisions when we're educated. We all made better decisions when we knew what cigarettes and tobacco did. We'll make better decisions when we understand the lingering effects of traumatic brain injury. Hey, Bill, ask Daryl about how he played 827 games with bad feet. <laughs> bad everything, Ron. But as a follow-up to what Ron just said, uh, at the exclusion of the outdoor game, why was indoor always the proper niche for you? Well, uh, back in high school, I actually injured my toe, and it still bothered me. I got major arthritis in it, and actually the soft ground of running outdoor, really, I couldn't even play anymore. I used to come out, you know, even in high school games, you know, I knew my career basically was over, but actually the hard turf, I could actually, I built other muscles up, other bones and all that. I broke some fifth metatarsals in the process, but it was actually easier for me to play on harder turf. Uh, and then growing up here in St. Louis, everybody knows there's an indoor facility everywhere, but you know, when I was growing up, there was only two. So I was there all the time. So, you know, that's another thing is that, you know, here in St. Louis at that early age, I got a, a little up on some people in other, in other cities that really didn't have all the indoor facilities yeah, we had. Yeah, right. Here. Arthritis, 800 games. Who plays 800 <laughs> games with arthritis? <laughs> this guy. You, uh, much is made lately of academy teams. Guys leaving college early, going over to play internationally, <laughs> Germany, England, wherever. After two years at Maryland, you left to go to play for 1860 Munich. Why, why that particular decision at that time, Taylor? Well, it's interesting. I, I think it's uh, an interesting discussion. I think St. Louis did so much um, for my upbringing, mainly because I played multiple sports. You know, I followed Scott Rowland, I was talking to Curtis, I was talking to Kevin Carter, I, I played all sports. I kicked for the football team, I played shortstop, and, and I played soccer and did it all. So it's an interesting discussion in 2015 because I think a lot of us, and, and I'm not a parent, so it's hard for me to tell parents what to do but this single sport stuff, I don't know if you should be playing a single sport at 9, 10, and 11. I, I got to meet a lot of young, different people, diverse. Um, 
And who's to say that a 9, 10, 11 year old's going to figure out what they're doing? Curtis couldn't skate. He still can't skate. And he was a pretty, he was a hell of a goaltender. And he did okay. So, I mean, so you know, I, I went to Germany, Bill, to answer your question because that time was right. But mm -hmm. I was 19 and that decision came to me. And at 17, I made a decision not to play pro baseball because for some reason in my gut, I couldn't give up the game. Your father was a professional soccer player. All his brothers were. Your other uncle on your mother's side, Jay Delsing, is a PGA pro. Your grandfather, Jim Delsing, played for the St. Louis Browns. Was it in your destiny to be a professional <laughs> athlete? Could you imagine if I would have come home and said, Mom and Dad, I'm going to be a carpenter? <laughs> no. That would have gone over real well. No. no. In all seriousness, um, I'm only here because of my mom and dad. And they're over here at, the, at table nine. I'm here because I was blessed with genes, God-given ability, and I didn't have a choice. I'm telling you right now, when your grandfather played with Joe DiMaggio and the Yankees, your dad played with Daryl Duran and Pele, and your uncle's playing on the PGA Tour with Tiger Woods, you really think I'm going to be an accountant? No, you're not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't have a choice. Daryl, you got a fan fest coming up October 3rd. Season starts November 14th. Team already? Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, we're putting a good team together this year. I'm still looking for a goalie, Curtis, if you can, you don't need to skate. <laughs> Uh, but that's going to be the, w the one thing I'm looking for. I need one more defender, but uh, I think we solidified the midfields, taking a little longer than I thought. Uh, our midfield and forwards coming along really well, so I just need two more players, and we'll be ready to go. Good. Two of the best ever in the history of St. Louis soccer, Daryl Duran, Taylor Twelman. <laughs>